Hurricane Hillary headed toward California. The last time the Golden State saw something like this was 1939. Hawaii now investigating if a utility company caused the Maui fires. Hundreds are still unaccounted for in Lahaina. And President Biden is visiting Lake Tahoe. The Secret Service already spotted. Good evening, this is To The Point, I'm Alex Bell. Hurricane Hillary is headed toward California, bringing flooding and landslide concerns. Los Angeles is now under its first ever tropical storm watch. The storm system could make landfall in the San Diego area. We are live across the state. We have Jenny Day, who is at Imperial Beach in San Diego County with storm preparations that are underway. Our Roxanne Elias is at the Sacramento International Airport with more on conditions. But tonight, we start with meteorologist Carly Gomez, who is tracking the timing of this storm. Good evening, Carly. Good evening, Alex. Yeah, we are watching Hillary now still a Category 4 and hanging on to that status just a little bit longer. Whether or not it intensifies is still to be seen. We do expect it to become a Category 3 at least within the next 12 to 24 hours. Now, the outer bands of the system start starting to push toward Cabo San Lucas as we've seen areas like La Paz already being inundated with heavy rain and those strong winds. Now, the hurricane, 130 mile per hour winds currently moving northwest, about 12 miles per hour. The track expected to head toward the north there around uh, about midnight or so on Saturday into your finally Sunday. We start tracking it as a Category 2 around midnight as well. And then finally, whether or not it remains a two or a one at landfall into San Diego there is still to be seen. Maybe a one, it may be a tropical storm, but the effects are expected to be damaging. Strong winds, heavy rain, flash flooding potential, and of course, the tropical storm watch that is now in effect. Waves could be as high as five to eight feet with gusts up to 45 miles per hour. And this is Sunday evening, Sunday night to Monday morning. We'll see that in effect there and that heavy rain expected to head our way. We'll talk more about that coming up. And San Diego is preparing for this storm system. Jenny Day is live in Imperial Beach, where flooding is not unheard of. Good evening, Jenny. Yeah, Sacramento, good evening to you. We're live tonight here in San Diego, where it really does feel like the calm before the storm. Right now, we have sunny and blue skies, but locals do know that Hillary is coming. Take a look at this market. Just steps away from the sand and they are already boarding things up. San Diego, more like Miami today, preparing for a rare summer storm, a hurricane off the coast of possible historic proportions. Uh, we're just getting sandbags because um, last time I didn't have them. <laughs> And I wish I did. Imperial Beach is prone to flooding. Dottie Kuza owns a little boutique hotel here and has seen it happen. We have like chairs in the front. We just like fold all those up, tie them down. I'm personally going to stay there in the office to make sure that nothing happens. The nearby Tijuana River is also a concern. For decades now, it backs up from trash and sewage, even after a small amount of rain. That's led to beach closures in IB for more than a year now. We're expecting anywhere between one to two, let's call it two to three inches of rain. That means that the river can flow up to a billion gallons of water per day, and all of that will be tainted with toxic sewage. So we could see impacts um, going up the coast all the way up to Point Loma. Our neighbors across the border are also in Hillary's path. The governor of Baja California warning residents to only leave their homes if necessary. No salgas de casa si no es necesario. She added that safety is the most important thing. Hurricane Hillary is currently packing 130 mile per hour wind gusts. Should weaken to a tropical storm by the time she gets to us, marking only the second time in San Diego history. I also spoke with an engineering professor at SDSU. If I have plans how you want to evacuate. He says the rainfall could surpass our yearly historical average in just a few days, and our infrastructure is simply not equipped to handle that. You might see trees broken, you might see damages to the vehicles, to the building, to the infrastructure. Yeah, so send us all of your positive thoughts, and we are really just telling locals to prepare. The good news is that we have time. We are telling residents to bring in patio furniture, turn off those sprinklers, and trim any troublesome trees because we may lose power. We're also telling people, of course, to have extra batteries on hand, candles, fill up that gas tank, all things that should be helpful heading into this weekend. We're live tonight in San Diego. I'm Jenny Day. Sacramento, back to you. Thank you, Jenny. 
and this storm is making history. The last tropical storm that made landfall in California was back in 1939. Newport Beach in Orange County was damaged. Buildings crumbled. These are photos of Newport Beach from the Orange County Archive. While Southern California will be the most impacted, Northern Californians need to pay attention. Our Roxanne Elias is at the Sacramento International Airport with a message from state officials. Alex Cal OES says they want you to pay close attention to this weather event, no matter where you live in the state. Sure, the hardest hit area will be Southern California, but that doesn't mean we're going to be in the clear just yet. Now, Brian Ferguson that I talked to earlier with Cal OES says that the California State Operations Center has all hands on deck and is prepared to prepare protect communities. He says a statewide impact is expected from San Diego all the way to Redding, and there is a possibility for rain and winds in Northern California. Now, outside of this weather event could also lead to thunderstorms, which brings the possibility of wildfires and additional flash flooding. Crews throughout the state are also ready to respond with firefighters on standby. This is really as challenging a storm as we've seen in the state really in the last 50 years. What we're told from our colleagues at the National Hurricane Center, National Weather Service is uh, this is the first time a storm of this magnitude could make landfall in our state in, in decades. Cal OES says that now is the time to sign up for those alerts with first responders, make a plan with your family, talk about what would you do if something happened at your home. They say that now is the time to make that plan before the storm hits. Alex. Oh yeah, definitely Roxanne. And I want to ask you before you go, you are at the airport. What are travelers saying about this storm? Right now, I think travelers are mostly concerned for people's well-being. They say that right now with all the weather events that have been happening, it's just concerning and they're worried about people's mental health. All right, Roxanne, thank you so much. In the Hawaii wildfires, 111 people are now confirmed dead, and that number is expected to rise. Hundreds of people remain unaccounted for. The damage done is more than $5.5 billion. People on Maui, they can use your help. You can make a Red Cross donation by scanning the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Tonight, more help is on the ground and residents are calling for answers. New satellite images show the destruction of Lahaina. Hundreds of homes and businesses in the town are decimated. An official cause to what ignited the nation's deadliest wildfire in the last century is still under investigation, though clues point to downed power lines from extreme high winds. Hawaiian Electric is conducting an investigation. Lawsuits have already been filed against them. And Hawaii's state attorney general office says they are working with a third party to launch their own probe. More than half of the burn areas have now been surveyed. And the number of search dogs doubled from 20 to 40 to help speed up the recovery effort. One father shares how he fought the fires while standing on two broken feet. I knew that my feet were in bad shape, but I didn't have time to worry about myself. I go, I can do something. I can help these people. I can put out these fires. I know I can. Three days later, the father reunited with his son, who also managed to survive. And tonight, more federal aid is on the ground on Maui. FEMA says about a thousand federal workers are starting to move survivors from shelters into longer term housing. But there are concerns about making money on the island. To be able for us to survive, we need to listen to make money too. Now, President Biden and the First Lady will be visiting Maui on Monday. They will be meeting with survivors and first responders and also taking a tour of the damage. The President and the First Lady, though, are on their way to Lake Tahoe right now. They will be staying in North Lake Tahoe this weekend before heading to Maui. Tahoe tourists are being warned to brace for more traffic. The Bidens will return to Tahoe after their visit on Maui on Monday. In other news, there is another traffic split on Highway 50. It's part of the Fix 50 project. And if you're driving westbound on Highway 50, you'll notice that three traffic splits, the first from Watt Avenue just before 65th Street, and now there's another that begins just after 65th Street all the way to Stockton Boulevard. The Soul Bloom Festival kicks off tomorrow in Sacramento's Discovery Park. The big music festival was rescheduled from April because of all the flooding at Discovery Park from severe storms. 
Next on To The Point, families in need throughout California can now get extra free money for fresh food. Highs today sitting at around 87 in Sacramento, 93 in Stockton, 91 in Marysville. We're as much as 12 degrees cooler than we were yesterday at this time. The big cool down into the weekend and what to expect. And harvesting sea urchins to help other animals. What a difference a day makes. It was a lot cooler outside, and I do not yeah. mind it. <laughs> I don't either. And the winds picked up a little bit, so it gave that cooler effect as well. And we're looking still at a cool weekend ahead. We get a little bit of a bump up in temperature tomorrow, right around the mid-90s. But we will drop right back down on Sunday. Still, thunderstorm chances do remain in the forecast through the weekend. And we could see it tomorrow as low as areas around Sacramento. Cooler temperatures still ahead into early next week as we also see some rain chances coming along with it. Now, we do have a special weather statement until about 9 p.m. for those thunderstorms that are pushing through the high Sierra spots. They should come to an end pretty soon. Now, again, with the thunderstorm chances pushing all the way down toward the western side of the valley there just before it approaches the Bay Area, we do have some good chances to see some convection. What's happening is we're actually getting a heat up tomorrow, which is going to heat the earth up. Meanwhile, we've been getting some cooler air, so unstable weather will continue. We'll see some cloud formations growing tomorrow afternoon as we may even see some thunderstorms in the area. Winds will also pick up about 15 mile per hour winds expected and then through the delta about 15 to 20 mile per hour wind gusts into Monday. That's when Hurricane Hillary is expected to start bringing in its rain as well as its winds coming in from the south. The winds will be about 15 to 20 miles per hour. A few gusts so could get as close as 25 to 30 miles per hour in those pockets. And then finally, we'll start to see most of that exit the area by Monday night. Here's the rain that could be associated with Hillary coming in by early Sunday morning, just some of the moisture. Then eventually by Sunday night, huge plume coming in from most of the Sierra spots, and then it wraps right around into areas around Sacramento, Placerville, Yuba City, as we could see as much as maybe a tenth to maybe a quarter inch for the higher areas of the foothill spots. Otherwise, we're not expecting a big rainmaker with this, but hey, we could get those rain chances. Temperatures could drop off into those mid to low 80s on Monday, upper 80s, and then mid to upper 90s through next week. Next on To The Point, families in need throughout California can now get extra free money for fresh food. Families in need throughout California can now get extra free money for fresh food, and we want to help spread the word, of course. So Becca Habecker takes us to the farmer's market to show us the difference that this is making in families' lives. Next in line, please. Morning. The Floor and Road Farmers Market is bustling with shoppers buying groceries for their families. Every week I come here, every Thursday. Yeah. I caught up with Mohammed Ashrif in line for CalFresh Benefits, also known as the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. I have seven members in my family, five kids, so I need a lot of things to buy. I can help who's next. People in the program get a certain amount of money per month for groceries, which they can spend at a store or at any participating farmers market throughout the state, getting market dollars to spend at the booths of local farmers. But now through the end of the year, thanks to a grant, CalFresh customers can get an additional $15 at each market. Spend 15 CalFresh dollars, get 15 free through Market Match. The beauty of Market Match and the way it gets people out to the farmers market um, is for people who you know, are food insecure or low income, it, it stretches their grocery budget. Sam Greenlee is executive director of Alchemist CDC, the nonprofit that runs the CalFresh booths at eight farmers markets in Sacramento County, including this one. Every Thursday, some 500 CalFresh customers come to the Floor and Road Farmers Market, and Alchemist CDC program assistant Nathan Dow says he'd like to see all of them get those 15 extra dollars. Just because the cost of living has been rising and other things like that, they've been really appreciative because now they can get more produce for their money, basically. The cap is a $15 dollar match per visit, but people can get that extra benefit several times per month as long as they can match it with their remaining monthly CalFresh funds. If they come out each week, that $15 turns into $60 in a month. This is a program for CalFresh EBT customers at participating farmers markets statewide and the extra market match dollars can only be spent on fresh fruits and vegetables. For more details on the program, you can visit abc10.com slash links. Every Friday, we hit the back roads. Tonight, John Bartell takes us to the Mendocino Coast, where some residents are trying to eat their way out of a potential ecological disaster. Uni. In many parts of the world, it's a delicacy. The yellow, pasty seafood comes from the urchin, a spiny ocean seaweed eater. 
The shellfish is often consumed at high-end Japanese sushi bars. But every June, chefs up and down the Mendocino coast tantalize the taste buds of tourists during the annual Urchin Festival. Urchin is native to California, and Mendocino County is in no short supply of them. The ocean floor is covered with them. I mean, they're everywhere. And if you're looking to harvest some for yourself, one of the easiest places to pluck them out of the water is at Van Dam State Beach in the town of Little River. You know, before this happened, you'd bump into them here and there, but now it's just, you can't avoid them. Greg Fonts is a spear fisherman, but when he's harvesting sea urchin, all he needs is some gloves and a giant knife. We kind of just do the brute method um, where we just get kind of something to two tools like this. Oh, you get right in there, don't you? Just you? Gotta, you just got to get in there. The only edible part of a sea urchin is the uni or the yellowish orange stuff inside the hard spiky shell. And the traditional way to eat it is raw. Is there a way you do you just it? Just slurp it down. You either get a gag or not. <laughs> some, of, some of it, when you really get in there, you know, the top layer, the, do, the top. It's layers of flavor, layers of flavor. Okay, I'm just gonna swallow, oh, yeah. <laughs> so the top layer, oh, it's, it's in there. To say the least, uni is an acquired taste. A taste that Mendocino County hopes can be acquired by tourists because there's an overabundance of sea urchin. This is what we're trying to actively remove from the ecosystem are these purple sea urchins. Anna Newman is a harbor master for the Noyo district, and the reason she wants the purple urchin gone is because they're eating up the coastal kelp forest that the fish and other aquatic life need to live in. And then he'll eat the top part of the, the blade, he'll eat on the stipe. A purple urchin is native to California, but sometime around 2014, a warm water eddy moved into Mendocino and Sonoma County's coasts, wreaking havoc on the ecosystem, causing important sea life to move out of the kelp forest and into colder water. They all started feeding and they all started breeding. So we really got this perfect effect that allowed the purple urchin abundance to just absolutely skyrocket. At the same time, the area is recovering from sea star wasting disease, which killed the purple urchin's main predator, the 20-armed sea starfish. And you've heard the saying that uh, cockroaches will inherit the earth. These little guys, the purple urchin, will inherit the sea. With the natural predators out of the equation, humans have to step in. The whole situation prompted the festival, I guess. What I love about this festival it combines two of my favorite things, discovery and food. Callie Dam is the owner of the Little River Inn and Restaurant and one of the main organizers for Mendocino County's Urchin Festival, an event that encourages people to eat uni. What exactly are we eating in here? Gonads. Go gonads. Gonads. Uh, also known as genitals? Not genitals, what's inside the genitals? <laughs> <laughs> well, after hearing that, my high school biology teacher would be pretty disappointed in me. The real definition of gonads is reproductive organs. In the case of the sea urchin, it's called roe or uni, and Callie is trying to show people that you don't just have to eat it raw. Joe Perez is a chef at the Little River Inn, and one of the many chefs in Mendocino County enhancing the flavor of uni. This looks so much nicer than when it came out <laughs> of, of this thing over here. Yeah. Joe hoped to change my mind on the taste of uni by mixing it in deviled eggs, and Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you, he succeeded. Oh, wow. This is a thousand times. This is a the better? best deviled egg I've ever had in my life. <laughs> All right, thank you. Conservationists, scientists, and the fishing industry are all working together to reduce the purple urchin population. There's no one solution that will fix this, but eating their way out of Mendocino's sea urchin problem can't hurt. Your goal is to take a problem and turn it into food. Find food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and educate people along the way. From the urchin-rich waters of Van Dam State Beach, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads. I don't know if I can eat you again. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, now it's your turn. If you have something that you would like to show John or you think would be a great road trip destination, make sure you let him know about it. You can text him at 916-321-3310. We're back after this. You can now show your driver's license or identification card on your phone. The DMV is piloting this at a few airports. Enrollment is free but limited, and you still need to carry your physical driver's license or ID card. We have more information on abc10.com slash to the point. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you have something that you want us to look into, make sure you reach out to me and the team. Let us know what's going on in your community. We read all of your comments, emails, and text messages. Have a great night. I'll see you on Monday. Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.